So we're here at the Wildwood, New Jersey Collectible Show. This was held on Friday, August 23rd, 2024. And I'm here and we're going to go through, we're going to see what they have to offer and hopefully come home with some cool stuff. We'll be looking for comics, we'll be looking for vintage toys and any other fun collectibles that they might have for sale here at the Wildwood Convention Center. So there's a lot of toys and collectibles here and trading cards, but here is our first bin of comics that we're coming across. Let's see what they have. So this bin really didn't have much in it, but there was this little wall of comics, which also really didn't have anything that stood out to me. Just some interesting books from the 90s. And here's a couple more comics, some early ASM and Batman books, but they were a little bit out of my price range.
All right, so we're home now, and it's time to take a look at today's haul. I got a couple vintage toys, and then I got a nice stack of comics. I have 11 books here that I pulled out of dollar bins, and then I have one wall book, a nice little key uh, that I purchased from my buddy John. Let's take a look at the haul now. Uh, starting off with this piece here. This is the Topps Trading Cards Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Deluxe Movie Edition. I thought this was really cool in the packaging uh, from... Where is it? From 1990, Mirage Studios. Uh, so this like a full set. I think there's 66 cards uh, of the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Uh, so that's really cool in the box. It's in rough shape. The cards inside are very mint though. So that was cool. I got that for $5. That was a good deal. I also picked this up here. Uh, this is the uh, Toy Biz uh, X-Men from the 90s, the Pocket Comics. Uh, this is the Asteroid M playset. You have Beast and Magneto, and it's got like X-Men 1 Magneto cover, the Jim Lee cover, and you it's a playset, and you open it up, and it's like a little playset. You got the little figures, almost like a Mighty Max, uh, but for X-Men. And this is mint on card. Uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, there's a couple other ones. There's the... Um, the Jet Hanger, the Danger Room, and the Spy Mission. Of course, you got Wolverine and Sabretooth, or Wolverine and Omega Red. And then you have uh, Magneto and Cyclops. So, pretty cool stuff. Uh, these are from, let's see here, 1994 uh, Toy Biz. Uh, I just think this was so cool. I picked this up for $10. I thought that was a nice little grab. Um, I collect all the old Toy Biz X-Men. They're very nostalgic to me. And I was excited to grab this for only 10 bucks. All right, let's get into the comic books now. Like I said, there are 11 books here that I got out of a dollar bin. Starting off with House of Mystery, issue 246. Bronze Age Horror is one of my favorite things to collect. When I find them in dollar bins, I grab them. Even if I have the issue already, if they're like kind of lower grade, for a dollar, I just pick them up because I just love them. So here's issue 246. I did end up throwing them all in Mylar's, so they look nice. Um, and most of them are like nice mid-grade copies. This one's got a cool cover with like the polar bear and the dog sled. So pretty cool. Uh, also picked up House of Mystery, issue 320. Really cool with the kids uh, looking under the stairs and there's all these zombie hands coming out. Pretty awesome. Uh, another mid-grade copy, cool cover. Can't beat it for just a buck. Also picked up House of Mystery, 321. Um, this almost looks like a Bernie Wrightson cover, but I don't think it is. Um, just a cool cover. This one's actually in a little bit higher grade and, uh, you know, can't go wrong. Nice little 60 cent Bronze Age horror book. Uh, some more Bronze Age horror, but from Charlton Comics. This is Ghostly Tales issue 123. Awesome werewolf cover. It's kind of like Little Red Riding Hood in the werewolf, uh, something like that. The big bad wolf, but really cool cover. And this one is in decent shape, mid-grade copy. Can't beat it for a buck. This is an awesome book right here. This is Tales of Evil, issue number one from Atlas Comics. Another awesome werewolf cover. This one is in really nice shape. Um, I mean, for a dollar, you can't beat it. And I think this one has like some decent value as well. Uh, it's an issue number one, an Atlas book, uh, you know, a affiliate of Marvel. Really, really cool. Another Atlas book here with an amazing cover, Demon Hunter, issue number one. I uh, believe this is first appearance of Demon Hunter. Uh, it's just got an amazing skull cover and really, really happy about this one for just a dollar uh, in pretty nice condition as well. Also found Moon Knight number five. It's a lower grade copy, but when I find Moon Knight uh, first run in the dollar bin, I just grab them. A huge Moon Knight fan. There's issue number five. And then also this killer... Um, uh, awesome Bill Stankevich cover, issue number eight. This one's also lower grade, but it's just such a cool cover, such a cool book, such an amazing run. And uh, for a dollar, like I said, had to pick it up. Love the Werewolf and Moon Knight cover. And then also found a uh, Sergeant Fury in his Howling Commandos, issue 51. Extremely low grade Silver Age book here, uh, but for a dollar, you know, really can't beat that either. Um, yeah, low grade 
uh, but still, I probably need this one for my run. I've been working on this uh, on this run pretty pretty good lately, so another one to fill a hole. And then also picked up Smurfs number one, uh, also a lower grade copy, but. Honestly, this can just be pressed and look way better. There's no tears or chips or anything. It's just got a lot of wrinkling on the cover. I could probably take most of that out. It's got a big white spine, so you can't even see the spine ticks. Um, new stand copy, Smurfs number one. Just needs a clean and a press, and that'll look way better. Can't beat that for a dollar. And then this was an awesome find, too. Probably my favorite dollar bin find. This is Black Knight issue number one in a newsstand, uh, which is pretty cool for this time in this era. Um, just a great book. I love the cover. Uh, it's just a fun number one issue, um, you know, kind of Copper Age, um, you know, reimagining or reintroduction of a cool character. Um, so excited about this one for just a dollar. And this is actually pretty high grade. There's no spine ticks, uh, maybe a little tiny one right there, but honestly, it's a gorgeous looking book and really happy to find that for just a dollar. Nice presenting copy. And like I said, I pulled one key comic off of the wall for my buddy John's booth. And that was this one here, Man Thing issue number one. This is a pretty decent looking book. It's got a couple spine ticks. But there's no big chips, no big tears. The cover's really clean. I'm going to go ahead and clean and press this book, and I think this will look great. I have a graded 5.0 copy of this, uh, but I wanted this raw. I, I don't really collect graded books. I don't grade books myself. Uh, I really just bought the graded version that I have because it was a good deal at the time, and I wanted a book. Um, I thought actually about cracking it open, but now I found this one. Uh, so now I actually have a raw copy. Uh, it was priced at $60 and John gave me a, a nice little discount, uh, like 10% off or so. And, uh, you know, really happy about this one. So man thing, number one, one of my favorite characters, you see him right here. It's that same, uh, cover, uh, on the lunchbox in the background. Just one of my favorite bronze age books. Uh, so cool. And it's got just an amazing um, Frank Bruner cover. I mean, how you can, really can't go wrong with Bruner artwork. And uh, the book itself is in really, you know, pretty decent condition. It'll look way better with a clean and press. So that's everything I picked up at the uh, Wildwood Collectible Show. Uh, like I said, I was slightly disappointed just because there wasn't many comic book vendors. There wasn't much of vintage toys. It was really just a sports card show uh, that had some other random vendors at it. Uh, so, uh, and the fact that I had to pay 20 bucks for parking, but you know, I did complain a little bit about that, uh, about everything, but honestly, it was a cool show. Um, it's not too far from where I live. Uh, I just went there on a Friday after work. I was only there for about an hour and then, you know, came right home. But I got a nice little stack of uh, of books out of the dollar bin, you know, 11 books. And definitely like just this book here pays for all of them. So that was a good find. And then, of course, I got a great key comic uh, that I wanted to add to the collection. Uh, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this comic book video. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell so you can see when I upload my next video. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. 